Well, hi there, everybody. It is the week after E3. You'd think there would be just a, a drought of trailers. You'd think there'd be nothing. We would be alone in the desert looking for a trailer oasis. But alas, uh, we had a lot of trailers this week. A lot of interesting stuff to talk about. A lot of cool trailers just came up today, uh, Thursday, when we're recording this. So why not go to the trailers? Hey, I got an idea. Let's all go to the trailers. My name is Brandon Jones. I'm joined by Ryan Stevens. And you're a liar. It's Friday. It's Friday today. Oh, God. Oh, that's how long a week it's been. <laughs> Uh, well, it's Sunday, technically, when this episode goes up. <laughs> I'm also joined by Mr. Kyle Bossman. What day is it for you, Kyle? Uh, Monday. <laughs> Every day feels like a Monday these days. Thanks, Garfield. <laughs> well, whatever day it is, it's trailer day, and we're going to look back at the trailers of the week. And I only got two more shows with Mr. Ryan Stevens, potentially. Daniel Bloodworth might be filling in for him. We might, he might guest star on occasion. He's taller, so it but, makes sense. But you're here now, and I got some trailers, so Six let's watch him. taller. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, a game I know all of us are intensely excited about. We got a trailer about the story, and it's interesting because it's not really about the story. It's a dev diary, and they chose to focus on story, and what it's really about is, like, research and tech. Like, they talk about, you know, their military research that they've done. They've worked with people who have, you know, served in these situations and work with people that are making predictions about what the future is going to be like, and so they're using that to tell the story. They don't really get into what the story is. And then later they talk about the face tech, which is basically how they brought like Kevin Spacey into the game. Uh, and again, not really getting into like who Kevin Spacey is or what the story is. I, I think they make one, uh, I'm gonna say, use the word meta as much as I can with my remaining time. I think they make one really <laughs> important meta note on the story and that you're gonna only be playing one protagonist, right. which has been the quagmire of confusion that the other Call of Duty games have kind of barreled into in the past. This was a weird trailer. It's two minutes long. And it feels longer. It's really well edited, but I also feel like there's not too much going on. They even use the word that they're trying to be like, look how authentic we are going into the future. And I think those little B-roll shots of the underwater stuff, like I don't know if you remember when they um, they mocap the dog and you saw the dog and the horses and all the ping pong balls. That kind of stuff adds little like legitimacy. I like that they use the word futurists. I, I like that. I liked that stuff. I know uh, Google just hired that Ray Kurzel guy. It does seem a little like a, a puff piece, even though they're trying to kind of like be like, hey, we're legit, and look at all this stuff that's happening in two minutes, but you kind of walk away being like, uh, okay. And I believe not all of the footage is from stuff we've already seen. The gameplay Most of it, footage. Yeah. There's yeah. a little off-screen stuff there, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't talk about this a lot in uh, trailer strategy. Yeah, look at this pre-order now. Boy, they <laughs> on love a story, showing On a off. dev diary. Pre-order now on a dev diary, Kyle. Yeah, awful. What's um, the world come to? But uh, I think it was a good idea to put this out the week after E3. You know, I think that Advanced Warfare kind of was not very acknowledged during E3. I think it, you know, failed to really rise to the top of who's getting attention. So I think putting this out here, honestly, a good idea. You know, we talked, we got through E3, we talked about the biggest games of E3, and oh yeah, Call of Duty's still coming this year. So, <laughs> good move there. The trailer itself, I don't know, it uses the word compelling three times. So like, oh, we got compelling characters, we got, a, it's very good, it's gonna be very compelling. I want to play the single player game in a weird way. And I appreciate that Every year, Call of Duty continues to make a single-player game, even though the vast majority of people playing the game don't care about it. I'm glad it exists. <laughs> and? That's about all you can say about a trailer is, I'm glad it exists. Well, you know, we've seen mocap stuff before. It's weird that, you know, this is this could be any game we're looking at right here. We've seen all this before, so it's strange for them to show it off, just like, look what we've got. Uh, you know, we're using actors and cameras. You're right, though. It's bizarre that it's called a story thing. I also remember going and not... talking to the team behind Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter way back when the 360 launched in the PS3, and uh, them talking about, oh, we're, you know, we're, we're really on the cutting edge of what future tech is going to be like. Uh, yeah, one last thing before I throw my score out. It always cracks me up when people, like you were saying, compelling. Like, they talk about how awesome their story is without actually just telling me the story. And so I wonder if that's because they're scared that the story isn't cool enough to stand on its own, or if they're really that nervous about spoilers. Do we think they care about spoiling the story of this game, or <laughs> are uh, they just like, eh, if we get into Kevin Spacey and kind of what he's doing, then people will just fall asleep and they won't really care. But if we show like you... you... No, it goes back to what you said. The fact that this is called the story dev diary is still highly bizarre. And Activision actually has a history of doing a behind the scenes after E3. They've done it pretty much every year. It's a good idea. Um, I think actually, I don't I think, think you're right too. It is a good way to keep it primed. I think story to this team means campaign. I think, you know what I mean? I think we're watching the campaign trailer, if that helps at all. Cause right, we don't learn very much about the story at all. I would've thought they would've hit Kevin Spacey a bit more though. Yeah, he, probably, just, he probably didn't want to do any of this. I think he probably didn't sign on to do any of these things. Yeah. 
Uh, this is a 7.1. Because it's, mm. it's well produced, like you were saying, it's short. Uh, they shot it well. It's clearly something that they intended to do. Uh, we got, um, I don't know, it felt like the A press conference for a second. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a, a very low score because uh, we didn't we don't learn much. You know, it's 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 it did a good job of putting the game out there, but like in terms of what we've learned from this trailer and what they wanted to show us versus what we absorb, uh, not a ton. Uh, Four point three. Ten. I'm also available to work on this game. <laughs> no. Uh, seven. That's really what I'm gonna say that for everything. Yeah. Seven point seven. I again like I I walked away from it feeling a little bit like. I didn't get anything, but I, I feel full. it's like Chinese food. I'm full after watching it, but I felt a little Call of Duty's Chinese little food, lacking. Yeah. Really, I thought it was really well put together, though. Like really well put together. The cool shots when they spin around this guy, we get some lines. Oh, hey, can I change the score officially? Sure. You did it once. I want to do it. Uh, in the last episode, I gave GTA V the, the trailer from the Sony press conference a nine. People in the comments pointed out that there was a pre-order now at the end of it. So uh, 8.5? I, I have to officially reduce that score to an 8.5. During the press conference trailer or when it got separately released? I think during the press conference trailer is what they seem to be yelling mm -hmm. at me for. Hmm. Well, it's good that people are keeping on your game. Yep. Yeah. Got to stay consistent. This guy just popped up this morning. It was the first trailer I watched this morning as I watched them in alphabetical order. <laughs> uh, right at the top of the list, Company of Heroes. This is not a major game. This is the launch trailer for a... Uh, expansion pack that is coming to Company of Heroes 2, as far as I understand it. So, they really wanted pe you to know about this. Kind of like the Division trailer that I really like from E3, the statues and Battlefield, this is some weird stuff. It's something that we don't usually see, so I think it's inviting in that way. Interesting that, I don't know what they shot this on, feels like digital. Interesting they spent so much money on these statues and the camera's kind of, eh. I think they get a little too close to these guys, and you can kind of tell that it's two actors. On someday in some park, you know. <laughs> uh, so I think maybe well, just keeping it at distance, or or you know, just shooting them from behind or low angle, or maybe make it fuzzy or something, but just hide the fact that they're just two guys in suits and makeup. I keep oscillating between them being statues and them being just giant army men from like Toy Story being placed around. You know, like the quality of the statue stuff. Uh, I went from hating this trailer to liking this trailer because where else are you going to see something like this? Like. 99% of movie trailers are montages and cuts of the movie. Once in a while, people do an added scene or something like that. So this kind of mixes in gameplay, live action. I'm not the biggest live action fan, but like, this isn't a sh this isn't really a short film though. This is like a vignette. This is like a tease of something like that yeah. compared to like uh, the Metro Last Light. Uh, anyway, I really like this though, because where else are you going to see a, a little promotional bet for something? And it's you know you know how you subtract your point five yeah. for a pre-order. There's the little not actual gameplay thing at the end, which is a little cornball. But I mean, this is a real-time strategy game. It's it is you know a locked view. It sometimes is hard to kind of represent, and it is a little smoke and mirrors, which I'm a kind of against. But overall, I really like kind of like the vibe. And I'm not a military guy at all, as I've said like a billion times. Uh, but I thought it was pretty good. So this is weird. I don't. I don't think those statues are there. I think that's CG. Oh, that could be. The Isn't statues that... he's walking by? Yeah. Maybe. That which is crazy that there's even like two of us who think that because they look they look legit, but it's mostly these tra like when the when it's, the camera's moving, it's like I don't know, man. Uh, I really like it too. I'm surprised by how much I like a Company of Heroes 2 expansion trailer. They did it. They they tried to make a statement and they did. <clears throat> uh, I see this soldier as us. You know what I mean? Kind of like walking forward. And I like that he goes straight up to the front line. This is cool. He's like going in the direction that everyone's looking in. Uh, and I think that's important. You know what I mean? He's, And then he finds another human, I guess, is what happens. Uh, this is awesome. I, I really is this, like this. Is this Valiant Heart's level of weepiness? I'm not weeping. Were you weeping? No, no it's just you're, you're, you're moved by it. At least slightly, aren't you, Kyle? <laughs> Yeah, you but know? not, not I, to the point of tears. I like that we... No, uh, I think it just seems cool. Yeah, right? I like I like that also it's not like, oh, God, another World War II trailer. Like, they're all but gone, you know? And so it's nice to have this franchise that focuses on it. So I think they, uh, it isn't completely out of step, you know, to make a live-action trailer. Again, for an expansion, that's what really surprised me, that it wasn't, like, this major launch. It was just kind of them being desperate, you know, like, right after E3. Like, oh, by the way, this came out. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope people check it out. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give this a... I want to say 7.8, but I'll give it an 8, because it's about war. Mm. Eight, eight, 8 for the veterans. Because <laughs> it's about war. Yeah, 8 for the veterans. Uh, uh. 8.3. I was going to say 8.2.
Cool. And also, like, there's like I've like a, a. It's cool, like you said, it's an expansion and it's a PC only game. It's cool that they're able to do something of note. I'm, that makes me happy. Teenage Kara Zor El survived Krypton's destruction in suspended animation on a craft following her cousin, Cal El. All right, and now for DC Comics to completely take over the show. Every single time an Infinite, Infinite Crisis character of announcement trailer comes out, or really any game, like a lot of MOBAs do this, where they'll have a new character. Um, I know, uh, what's the World of Warcraft looking MOBA? Um, Smite or Smite? Smite? Smite does uh, okay. a lot of a really good job with all of its uh, hero reveals. And we've just never talked about this type of trailer. So you have a game like a fighting game or a MOBA. You have a new character. You want to show people why that character's cool, why you should maybe come back into the game to try it out. Uh, some cool moves that it does. Uh, and it's an interesting type of trailer to do. It's something interesting for us to score and say, like, you did a good job at that or not. Yeah. Uh, one thing that, that I want to point out about this trailer before I pass it on to see if there's anything you guys have to say about this trailer at all mm. uh, is... She's very specific in how you play as Supergirl. It's not just like, oh, here are all these different moves. She's like, hit A, hit B, hit C, and win. That's what you should well, do. In she, this situation, use this. She's an agile bruiser. That's yeah. what you're supposed to do. Yeah, just very straightforward about how you're supposed to play it. I don't know, isn't that kind of like uh, the Pokemon thing, where it's like, you should know those nuances instead of the trailers or the game or anything outright telling you what you're supposed to do? It would be absurd if Pokemon made a trailer that told you which moves to use against which other Pokemon. That would be hilarious. It'd be laughable. Basically, I think they have to do these things because they're probably... Like, if you want to play League of Legends, there's going to be plenty of videos teaching you how to play League of Legends. I don't think that... Uh, what is this? Infinite Crisis. I don't think Infinite Crisis has that same kind of uh, support base of people who are making strategy videos about it. Maybe it does, but, you know, uh, like, the actual, like, tips part of it really bums me out. I don't like it when a game is telling me what the best tips for playing it is. So from a I'm not playing this game perspective, you think the tips should be taken out? Would, 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 this, would this trailer have been easier to watch if she had just been like, Supergirl, here's her moves, here's why she's cool, go DC Comics. Yeah, and out. maybe, you know, hmm. giving you a glimpse of the combos and the, and the kind of like loadouts you can do without telling you which the best ones are already, do you know? I, I, I have a weird thought on this trailer where I kind of was bored to tears and hate it, but I actually <laughs> thought it was really well put together. Sure. Because it's a bait and switch. The first minute is like, this is who she is. They have the cool kind of layered video stuff going. Um, you know, not distracting, not too showboat, showboaty, but you know, it's like well put together and it's like they tell you who she is, why you should care. She's the cousin of Ka El, which I'm curious if it means they could marry or anything or if that'd be illegal. Then it goes straight into the moves and then later on into the tips. And so they kind of, you know, they boil the frog a little bit, so to speak. But to Kyle's point is these games are accessible and inaccessible at the same time. It's and you know these are all free to play and they all depend on their their player base spending money that they don't have to spend, and when you go in and you just get murdered, that's no fun. So I think they're just trying to even the playing field in any sort of way. Okay. And I think, I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like I think, you know, Riot is what half a block away from us, and I think you know they're constantly fighting. They want to grow their player base, right? Player acquisition. I'm sure there's someone over there who's called player acquisition, <laughs> right? And it's hard to, uh, when you go in and everyone knows what they're doing and everyone's yelling at you, know, the, the, the myth of the toxic, the toxic community, I think you have to support things as much as you can. And I think this is a classic, what, like four minute? Three minute. Yeah, three minute, in and out, very dense, very well put together. I mean, I've, I've played two rounds of Dota 2 in my life, but I, I could kind of understand what was going on here, you know? Just knowing basic, basic MOBA crap. Though I think it is so weird to see like Doomsday just kind of sit in there Taking eating punches. it. Yeah, yeah, that's just the genre, man. That's, you got to get used to it. Um, Fans of the genre. <laughs> what, one last thing before we can move on from this. What about the voiceover? I mean, this is a very direct. Oh, um, it's, huh. a, it's a female, which is nice. It's always nice to hear ladies talk about games. Would this have been better to have cast someone as Supergirl, being like, "These are my moves," or would it, you know, have somebody really epic that's just like the DC guy who's like, "This is Supergirl." Yeah, I this mean, what she does. It's, a, it's a female voice actor, and she's also, like, her tone isn't that serious, to be honest. It, she, I don't yeah. think she's a voice actor, she's a dev. Oh, okay. Very it cool. sounds like she's on the team. I don't think she had, uh, says her name directly, but it might be the kind of thing where if you're really involved in the community, it's like, oh, it's civil. Uh, I actually like her tone. I, I like it a lot. I'm happy that there's not a gravelly-voiced guy telling us Yeah, I would agree, the nonchal nonchalant thing. I know, like, I, I rewatched the Rainbow Six gameplay demo. The from, live one? Yeah, and, okay. and, and the, the Division, and I... 
I, uh, our, our, our dear friend Marcus Beerhead is Annoyed Gamer Show, and I, I have to agree that weird, like, wait, are these the characters in the game talking, or is it supposed to be gamers talking? And that, that stuff, like, kind of really bugs me. I like when things seem natural instead of, like, scripted natural. Like, TV real versus real real, if that makes sense. I think a lot of effort was put into this, as boring as it is. I, <laughs> I give it a six. This isn't the trailer's fault. It really bugs me her character model is constantly smiling. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock the trailer for it, but like they show this incredible art, this 2D art, art of her, and she looks kind of like kind of depressed. She you know she's like oh man, just me and my cousin lived. That's it. And then she's just like the smiling blonde woman wandering around this battlefield at this point. But you know that's not the trailer's fault. Anyway, uh, you you're both right in that this is a very simple. It's very helpful to the people who would be watching it, which is kind of cool. Uh, but don't ruin the. I don't know. I don't. I'm really not into like the. Here's the best way to play our game, uh, coming directly from them as they introduce the character to you. Uh, let everyone else teach us that. Five point seven. Six point one. <laughs> So those were all the trailers for the week. See, I told you there were some good uh, some good trailers this week, despite it being the week after E3. I guess it definitely is a ploy that you're like, well, now that E3's over, you know, the slate is clean. I can show whatever I want. I uh, got a really uh, awesome VO trailer for Astro Lords. Uh, the VO just makes it. If you guys haven't seen this trailer, check it out. This guy is really, really intense. I think when you it have comes to play to... a clip. You have to play at least one line. Capture asteroids of other lords and destroy alien bases. Reinforce your space station's defenses and train your generals. Uh, speaking of other trailers with funny voices, Grit Autosport got a great... I don't know where these guys are from, Australia or, or the UK or whatever, but just talking about drifting. I loved they it. Love it. I love this know. trailer. Uh, it's great. Um, they definitely, Grit Autosport definitely tried to have um, a kind of on-location vibe with real drivers talking passionately. Even the launch trailer they just came out with uh, has some V owner there that's just like, oh, racing, love it, so good. Uh, <laughs> So lots of funny voices. Uh, uh, Shadowgate, Mr. Stevens, you wanted to make sure we uh, give a shout out to. Uh, One of the got, rare games I kickstarted. Got a storyline so. trailer that was actually about the story. <laughs> Who would have thunk? <laughs> Who would have thunk? Uh, and uh, has some cool art that I don't know if it was produced solely for the trailer or if uh, we'll actually see some more of that stuff in game. You think that game will have a game intro, Shadowgate? Yeah. It'll have very like cutscenes. There'll be like, like lightning that. crashing. The whole game's kind of a cutscene. So trailer of the week. Uh, all the trailers were kind of, yeah, maybe Astro Lords. That's pretty good. I, uh, I think else. score company, wise, uh, Company of Heroes company did pretty Heroes. well amongst us. Oh yeah, that was kind of a fun surprise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not great, but pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Trailer of the week. <laughs> uh, obviously, there's more exciting stuff to see on GameTrailers.com this week. Those are just the six that I chose to focus on for this show. Uh, I wanted to bring up some random ones just because it is the week after E3. When else do you do that kind of stuff? But we'll be back in full force. You will be here, Ryan Stevens. Not sure when we're recording that next week. I'm not here on Friday, so we record it Thursday. We'll record it tomorrow then. <laughs> We'll all meet at my house. Hope you guys had a great week. See you soon.